okay guys so welcome back again so in this video let's talk about our api errors because till now we have only logged in the error message inside the console we have not sent back the error to the client and it is always advisable to send an error message to your client when some error happens inside your application as you can see here that if we are getting a product by its id we are simply logging it inside the console and if we are updating the product then also we are simply logging it inside the console but you should always send these errors back to the client so that client application know that what to do in case any error happens so for that i am going to use a package that is called http errors and it's a npm package and it will simplify creating errors inside your application so for that i am going to install this http errors package inside our application so let's go to our application and here our application is running and let me stop it and i'll do npm install dash dash save http errors And now it is installed and we can go to our package.json file and we can see that this package has been installed as a dependency. So let me close this package.json file and let me start my application. And now to use this error package, what we need to do, let's go to our app.js file. And here, as we can see that in the 404 handler, which we created a couple of videos ago, we see that we were creating our error message like this. So firstly, what we are doing, we are creating a new error like this. That is new error not found. And then we are adding the status to this error and we are calling that error 404 because 404 HTTP error is for not found. And then we are simply calling next and we are passing this error object here to the error handler. And then rest of the work is done by the error handler. So firstly, what I'm going to do, I'm going to require that package and let me go at the very top here and let me require that package. So const create error equal to require http errors like this and then here inside our application inside the 404 handler you would see that why i am using this package here so for so for now let me comment this thing out from here or let me comment this thing also out from here that is next error and what i would simply do since it is a 404 handler here that this app.use is a 404 handler what we can simply do by using this this package is that we can directly create our error here so we can simply say next and create error and here in the parentheses we can pass in two parameters firstly the status code and second the error message so we can simply say 404 and sec secondly we can pass in not found like this and we can save this application and we see that our application is restarted and now as you can see that using this package makes it very easy to create http errors and though you can use the built-in error module to create your errors and then uh, setting the status on your error object to be 404 and then passing in the error like this that is next error or you can use this package that is next create error 404 not found and i think that this is very convenient when we are going to use it in our routes so now let's go to our rest client and let's see that if it is working so we are going to this route that is 404 route that doesn't exist or that is not handled by our api it is handled by the 404 route so let me make a request here so let's click here send request and we see that again we are getting that 404 error here and that's with the status 404 and message to be not found so now let's see that how do we use it in our routes so firstly let's go to our product route here and firstly we are targeting this route that get a product by its id so if we go to our risk client here and let's uh, see where is that uh, route here and this is this route here that is we are getting a product by its id so if we click here that is making a get request to this uh, route here we are getting this product back but in case it might happen that with this id the product even doesn't exist that is the product is not there with with the id that is passed by the client so let's uh, uh, let's see what happens there so we see that if we change the id here and that doesn't exist in our database so what happens here we are getting this error here what we are getting here is a http status code okay that is 200 but we are getting nothing inside our response here and if we go to our product route here and if we simply log in the product where we are sending the product back let's see what uh, what is contained inside the product here so console.log product and let's let's save it and now let's go to our risk client here and now let's make a get request here and we see that we are getting null here as you see in the console here that we are getting null here and the reason for this is that that this product doesn't exist inside our database so firstly what we need to do we need to check if the product exists so for that what we can do we can simply use this uh, if block here so if not product 
that is if the product doesn't exist that is that is if the product is null or undefined so what we can do we can simply throw an error here and that uh, error would be cached um, by this catch block here so we can simply say uh, throw create error and firstly we would like to include that create error here so that we can use it here so for that what i'm going to do i'm going to require it at the very top so create um, create error equal to require http errors like this and now inside our get route here we can throw this error here so we can simply say create error and we can pass in here 404 and we can simply send the set the status of the error message that the process product does not exist so we can say product does not exist like this and now we can save our application and now we can go to our rest client here and now if we make a get request to an id which doesn't exist in our database let's see what error do we get here inside our uh, uh, response here so let's make a send request here and we see that we are seeing here that product does not exist and again we are seeing it inside the console because we have only cached the error we have not sent it to the error handler here inside the app.js file so what we need to do here inside the catch block we can simply say next error and once you say this that is next error then what will happen here is this that this next block will directly go to this block here that is the error handler and error handler will handle all the errors accordingly and now let's save this application and now let's go to this get route here and we see here that we are getting this status message here that 404 product does not exist and now if we find the product which existed here so we see that we are getting back the product but if we change the product id here we see that we are getting this thing here that is product does not exist and the status code is 404 and we are also getting the http response code 404 not found so now let's see that uh, if you pass a wrong id here that is an id which is not of type of mongoose object id so let's uh, change this id and we remove the last letter here and now let's make a get request here so let's click here we see that we are getting this error here that is cast to object id field and don't worry about these three uh, log statements because it has something to do with the rest client and uh, uh, now and we are seeing this thing here that is cast to object id field for this value here because this is not of type of a mongoose object id so what we can do here that we can go back to our error handler and before calling this next error what we can do we can check this error and let me remove this console log statement from here or let it be so what i'll do here before calling the next with error parameter what i would like to do i would like to check if error is instance of mongoose dot cast error and i would like to require this mongoose here again at the very top of our application or of this product route here so what i would do const mongoose equal to require mongoose and let's save it and now let's go back to this uh, route here that is the get a product by id route here and now uh, this should be and this should be mongoose dost cast error then we would uh, send in a different error message here and we can simply say next create error and here we should say 400 that it is a bad request and we can pass in the error message here that is invalid product id so invalid product id and then we want to return from this uh, if statement because we do not want to go to this next statement here we want to simply return from this if block here and we can save this application again and now let's go to our rest client here and now let's make a get request to our route in which we have passed the object id which is not of type of object id so let's make a get request here so we see here that here we are getting 40400 error that is bad request and we are getting the message here that is invalid product id
So now this is how we handle the errors inside the get a product by ID route. So now let's uh, see about this delete a product by ID because it is very similar to getting a product by ID. So let's go again to our product route here. And here the same things which we have done in this route, we should just need to copy them and just paste them inside our delete route. So what we can do, we can simply copy this thing here. Again, because deleting a product by ID route is similar to this uh, uh, getting a product by ID route because in both the routes we are passing this ID here and we are getting the product back. So let's go back to our product route here and let's copy this thing from here that is inside the catch block here and let's go to our delete route here and here we can simply paste it here inside the catch route and then again inside this result block here that is this try block here we are directly sending in the result here but it might be a case that the product with that id never existed in the database so what for that we can do a similar thing as we have done in the getting a product by id so we can simply copy this thing from here that is from inside the get product by id and we can paste it here inside the delete route and here instead of product we should say result so we should say result like this and then let's save this application and let's go to our risk client here and here let's make a delete request to this product id or let's get a list of all the products so here we see that we have iphone 11 let's copy its id from here and let's go to our delete route so this is the delete route and let me remove this uh, and let me paste it here and now if we click here that is uh, make a delete request to delete this product so firstly this product would be deleted as we can see here and now if i again click here because this product is already deleted from the database we should get a no product does not exist error here and it should be a 404 error and let's make a send request here so we see that we are getting this status here that is 404 and http status code is also 404 and the message is product does not exist and if we change the id to be an id which is not of type of mongoose object id and now if we make a send request here we see that we are getting this error here again that it is a bad request and it says that invalid product id and a very similar approach is required whenever you are updating a product so let's go to the update route here that is update a product by its id so firstly since we are providing in the id here as you can see in the rest client that to update a product we need to provide in this id here so firstly what we can check that if the error is of type of cast error so let's go to our product route here and inside the catch block here we should simply check so if error instance of mongoose.cast error then what we can do we can simply say return next and we can create an error like this and this should be 400 invalid product id like this and let me give me some room here or else we can simply call next with the error here that is the error object coming in the catch block and now here if it is a valid object id but there are no products related to that id in our database then what we should do we should again check here that is if not result if there is no result related to this product id then what should happen we should throw an error here that is throw throw create error and this error should contain that the product does not exist with that id and it should be product does not exist like this and let's save this application here and again you should know that here we are not going to check for validation errors because the object uh, because the product is already been created so now let's go to our rest client here and now let's send an update request to this uh, product id or uh, firstly let's get a list of all the products and here we are targeting this id here so let me copy its id and here let's paste it so here let me remove the name from here and the price i'll change to 1249 and if we make a send request here we see that we are we are getting the updated product back but now let me change in the product id and we are providing in an id which is not of type of object id so if we make again a send a patch request here we should get this uh, error here that is 400 error that it is a bad request because it is an invalid product id 
and now let me change its id which is a valid object id but that id does not exist in our database and this time we should be getting this error that is 404 product does not exist so let's go to our rest client here and let me make a send request here or a patch request and we see that we are getting this error status here that is 404 not found and in the response error object we are getting a status 404 and message product does not exist so now let's see how to handle error inside when we are creating a new product so here firstly let's go to our uh, create a product route so let's go here so here we are uh, we are inside a product uh, so here we are creating a new product and if we make a request here we see that we are, we are created this product that is apple watch gps plus seller with price 699 and now let's see that if we remove any of the fields here that is now i'm removing this price field here but as in our model we know that this price is this price field is required because in our product sema we have marked this price to be required and name to be required also so now let's make a post request to this route that is to create a new product without providing in the name field or without providing in the uh, price field so now let's see what error do we get inside the console because here we have simply logged in the error here so let's make a post request here so we see here that we are getting this uh, error here that is product validation failed price path is required so what we can do we can simply call uh, we can simply go to a product route so what we can do here first is that we can check if the error name is a validation error because this is how you can check for validation errors so if error dot name equal equal to validation error then what we want to do we want to simply call in next and then we want to return from this route so we can simply say next and create error and we can simply say 422 that is it is an unprocessable entity and that is the http status code for unprocessable entity and here we can simply pass in the error message here that is error dot message like this and then we can simply return here or else what we can do we can simply call in next here and we can pass in the error here if some other error happens instead of the validation error so now let's save this application here and now we see that we are getting this thing here and that is because and that is because of the rest client so now uh, let's provide in the price this time and let me remove in the name field from here and now let's make a post request again and again we see that we are getting this error here that is 422 error unprocessable entity and the status code is 422 and message product validation field path name is required or else if we are not providing in the price then we should be getting this thing here that is path price should be required so let's make a post request here and we see here that we are getting this 422 for unprocessable entity error and in the message we are seeing that path price is required so this is how you handle error inside when you create a new product so guys this is how you handle api errors inside your node.js application so that's all for this video and in the next video what i am going to do is that i am going to clean up this thing here that is product route and we should remove all these callback functions from here and we should be putting them in another file that is called the controller file since we are following the mvc architecture here that is model view controller so till then have a good time and have a good day